Hey, welcome to Desk Lady Ada. Hey, everybody, and welcome to my desk. It's me, Lady Ada, hacking away. It's been so rainy this weekend, and so we got a lot of hardware done. Um, we didn't get as much sun. Uh, so let's jump right in. Uh, let's go to the overhead. We'll talk about some of the prototypes that we've been working on. Um, so last week we talked about the uh, Seesaw Stemma boards that we've been working on and the prototypes that we've been, you know, putting them together and getting them working. Uh, so this is the first one I wanted to get working because uh, this is the one I get the most tech support questions about. Um, a lot of people have, well, this is a, a Raspberry Pi computer over here that it's connected to, but a lot of people have single board computers like All Winner, Rock Chip, Omega, Pi, Onion, Orange, Banana, sorbet and they want to use neopixels because we have a blinka library and blinka lets them use all sorts of um i squared c devices i don't know if i have any i squared c devices on my actually it's weird I usually have like 15 but i don't have any i squared c stuff on my desk but um you know they want to use uh sensors and accelerometers and temperature sensors and light sensors and all that but then they also usually want to run uh neopixels and um the uh, problem with that is that NeoPixels, they're really easy to use because they only use uh, one GPIO pin. You only need uh, power, ground, and green is data, but you need to have very specific timing. And um, on the Raspberry Pi, we actually take advantage of the PWM um, subsystem and we DMA it or we use SPI and DMA it. So it's like a hack um, because it's very hard to get bit banging working on single board computers because you don't usually get to use the cpu for that whole you know whatever 10 milliseconds you need to, to spit the data out and also there's a lot of new chips that come out that don't have um neopixel like every once in a while there's a new chip uh from renaissance or nxp or whatever and, and somebody has to write that neopixel driver um that that person tends to be somebody at adafruit but uh, also a lot of contributors um as well however um it could take some time or maybe it's buggy. And so there's people who are like, I just want a way to control a strip of NeoPixels from any single board computer, even if it's not a Raspberry Pi. Um, so this is our little dev board that does that. So this is a NeoPixel driver and uses Seesaw. So it's got an ATtiny 1616, which has 2K of RAM in it. Um, and that means it can buffer because you have to buffer the entire NeoPixel strip at once before you write it. And you need three bytes per pixel. So this basically can do 500 plus pixels. Um, and here I have it connected up to, it's not 500, but it's 165 or so uh, LEDs. They're very uh, high density. Um, it makes it easy because I can keep it on my desk and I can make sure that it works for long strings without having like, you know, 5,000 meters. Um, and so this is being controlled, even though the, the Raspberry Pi technically can drive pixels directly, this is going through I squared C. So this is the I squared C IO connected to a um, stomach UT port and then it's sending the seesaw commands you know basically like you know the, the data and address and then whatever data it wants to put onto the neopixels and every time you set a neopixel color it sends an i2c command and then the internal buffer get updated and then you say okay show the data and it sends all the data out on the neopixel port so it's got um pre-soldered uh terminal blocks here and there's three outputs that are connected to uh, my NeoPixel. I just have them plugged in. And then um, this is the power input. So, you know, there is a power pin here, but this power pin is three volts. And that should be for like the, the sensor logic. You'll need a separate power supply for NeoPixels. Why? Because you're never gonna get the amp or two that you often need over these thin wires and over this connector. This is really only rated for like 100 milliamps or 200 milliamps. You know, just because something connects and you could put an amp through it doesn't mean you should. Uh, you can, you know, melt this connector. So um, there's a separate terminal block input for power. And, um, you know, it's labeled 5 volt in, ground, and then ground signal and 5 volt out. So those, the 5 volts and ground are just connected together. Um, and then I have this connected to a, uh, you, you know, USB power supply and give me two amps. Um, and then, uh, you know, this is the demo. So let's go to the computer real fast and I can show. Um, so the code uh is here um and so this is using uh blinka when i have that when i have the green demo going it makes me transparent because of the green screen um and uh, you know i tell it how many uh neopixels there are and then when i instantiate it i use seesaw and i tell it the i squared c address and you can have multiple i squared c addresses this has like i think three or four jumpers so you can have tons of these um and then these are the animations and then you instantiate it through um 
the seesaw interface rather than with the direct pin. But the good news is, again, this works on any chip that has I squared C. Trade-off is it's not as fast, right? Because there's nothing faster than just doing all in RAM and blending it out. Um, so just as a reminder, uh, don't forget you can uh, boot config.txt. In config.txt, you can set um, the I squared C speed because most microcontrollers, you can kind of instantiate I squared C, you know, to whatever speed you want, usually 100 uh, kilohertz or 400 kilohertz. And you do that um, in the system or uh, sometimes per device, like with Arduino, you would say, I want to connect to this device and I'm going to use, um, you know, this speed, you can set the frequency dynamically. You can't do that with uh, Linux, but what you can do is in the I squared C parameters here, you can set the baud rate. So here I have it set to one megahertz. And um, the teeny core for the IT Tiny 16 is like, works great at one uh, megahertz. You just have to make sure you have good pull-ups um, for uh, something like that. But um, as long as the cable is fairly short, and remember, you know, the I squared C cable can be short and then the NeoPixel strip can be quite long. You know, it works pretty well. So, so that's one board and I've sent that off. Um, and I think it'll be really handy for people because again, I get so many requests like, can you please port NeoPixel to this, 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 and say, I'll be like, you have I squared C, here you go. You know, it's like six bucks, add this um, add-on. Okay, so that's one demo I did. Um, and yeah, it's like, I'll, I'll, you know, figure out exactly, you can do the math and basically every time you write a pixel, it takes, you know, six bytes over I squared C. So um, if you're wondering like, how long does it take to, uh, uh, to write the strip. It's, it's again, it's not ideal for, um, you know, very, very long strips where you want to do very complex animations. But if you're, if you're doing like a sparkle animation or you're doing some like color swirls and it, you know, you don't have to write all the pixels every time, uh, you don't have to send the data for every pixel every time you're good to go. Um, okay. Back to the overhead, please. Okay. The next, uh, board that I was working on for Seesaw is, um this little gamepad um this is actually very similar to a feather wing that we make but that feather wing uses the sam d09 which it's like annoying to get and so i also ported this to the at tiny 816 it's got uh six buttons and i'm kind of digging these um these are kind of tall but they're nice and soft so you can kind of like press them all at once without hurting your fingers um, and then there's these two tactile buttons that are a little bit uh, clickier and then this is an xy thumbstick so this we have to solder in. It's not surface mount. Uh, although, you know, ironically, I just press fit it in and it kind of works fine. Um, and then you get a couple of pull-up resistors. One of the things I really like about the AT Tiny 816 instead of the SAMD09 is, yes, it's not as fast, doesn't, you know, whatever, but it's about the same price or cheaper. And you don't need a regulator because it runs from three or five volts, no problem. And um, you don't need a level shifter because the I2T can also work either way. Oh, that reminds me, actually, I forgot to mention for the this uh, NeoPixel Seesaw, probably wondering, hey, you know, NeoPixel is like five volt logic. Um, so there's actually a little, uh, my favorite AP3602 uh, switch cap loose converter, um, not very power efficient, but boy, it does not take a lot of space because you only need the chip and one capacitor. It's very inexpensive and just gives you like a couple milliamps of five volt power. So what's interesting is that this is actually running at five volts so that the logic output is five volts, but then the I squared C pull-ups are to 3.3 volts. And that's, that works just fine um, for us. And that way, uh, what, you know, if this is three volt logic here, um, this gets boosted up, but you still have three volt I squared C and five volt um, NeoPixel output. Also means that this chip can run at 20 megahertz, which is a little bit uh, nicer in case, you know, I want to have um, fast responses to I squared C. Okay, sorry, that was all stack pop all right back to here um right so this one's running at 3.3 volt logic and then you know there's always the projects where i'm like i just want to add a little like a controller and i know that we have like the wiimote classic but sometimes i want something maybe you know very small and very simple just to add a little bit of a control interface uh so this connects over i squared c um you know two axis joystick you have two address pins and then um, also uh, uploaded this with the, the Seesaw software. So go to my computer. Um, so on my computer, this is the uh, this is the code for connecting to it. Let me see if I have the code that I programmed into it. Okay, this is the code I programmed into it. Um, 
you know, you, I tell it the, the peripheral code. So this is the code that's, it's like Arduino, but it's compiled to it on the chip on the little gamepad. Um, I tell it the peripheral address. Uh, it's got two uh, I squared C address selection pins. It's an interrupt pin. Uh, and then I, I, I config the analog digital converter. Every time you add a peripheral, it takes more flash and RAM uh, because I have to manage um, those commands. So I don't turn them on unless I need them. Uh, in this case, I need the ADC. And then um, it runs the Seesaw peripheral uh, code. And then on the gamepad side, um, I have the pin definitions. So these all match up, you know, 6251016 match up with the schematic. So here you can see, uh, you know, 1610265. So um, these are the Arduino pins that I put here nicely in the schematic to help me connect with like PB4. What is that really called? And I kept like looking at this diagram until I'm like, okay, I'm going to put it in the schematic. Um, then it connects over I squared C. It turns on pull ups for all of the GPIOs, which saves me, you know, a bunch of resistors on the board. I don't have to do that. Uh, and then it can read the two analog inputs for the X, Y. And then it does a little bit of hysteresis. So it checks here, makes sure that, um, you know, in case, because there's a little bit of wobble, you know, the potentiometer isn't perfect. Um, there's always like a little, sometimes it goes back and forth, one or two digits. So as long as it's been, um, it doesn't print out the, it only prints out if there's been a change in the X and Y. And then um, it prints out every button that's been pressed. It reads all the buttons at once. It reads like it does one bulk read of all the um, buttons over I squared C. So it gets like one four byte array with up to 32 IOs. And then, um, you know, checking whether the button is zero, the button bit is zero, it, uh, it knows it's been pressed. So let me see if I can. Okay, so I actually have that running right now. Let's see if it's still working. Okay, so um, here I'm pressing the you know little little buttons on the. On. Oh, one second. There you go. Uh, as I press the little buttons, um, it's like okay, select, start, and then when I move the X Y, it knows that uh, something's changed. So you've got X and Y coordinates. So um, another little uh, handy breakout board, I think, will be great for using with Seesaw. Okay, so that's what I've been working on my desk. Um, so next up, uh, we've got uh, some news from the fruit uh, from about MicroPython's yeah, tenure. A, year. Oh, a few things. So uh, first up, you've been in the middle of your redesign, so we had to do a 300 uh, homage to all your redesigns, and I think that goes in with um, the 10 year celebration of MicroPython. You can pull that up and talk about what's been going yes. on. Yes. And then okay. um, we'll also talk about some of the things that we've been doing, the RP2040, and that'll bring us to the great search after that. Okay. So there's an anniversary. Yeah, there's an anniversary. So it's 10 years of MicroPython. Um, you know, I'm, I'm zooming in, but of course, download yeah. this poster from micropython.org. Uh, first off, I didn't know that there's a new Ambic Apollo uh, based Pi Board D, which is pretty cool. This is a um, Bluetooth low power chipset that um, Sparkfun is really into. The, I think they call it the Artemis. I think it's the same family, but I'm, I'll be honest, I haven't used the chip very much. So if it's a different version, I, I apologize. But it's apparently very, very low power and it does Bluetooth low energy. So that could be very cool. Um, you know, they talk about uh, historical things. You know, MicroPython is now supported with an Arduino. Um, the you know Raspberry Pi Pico chip was a really big deal. Uh, the the suggested um, programming interface for that board and that chip is MicroPython. Um, the chip itself was designed specifically to make it really easy to use with embedded microcontrollers. It has just get what I like to call a s ton of RAM. Um, most Cortex M0 microcontrollers come with 16, 32K of RAM. And with MicroPython and then CircuitPython, which is based on it, of course, all the instructions have to live in RAM. Like you load the code dynamically. And so 32K of RAM is like really the bare minimum to kind of get anything done. You really need at least 128K to have a good time. And the RP2040 comes with 264K plus a really wonderful bootloader um, that I keep seeing people love. Uh, don't forget, uh, MicroPython has uh, GitHub sponsorship. Um, and who are some sponsors of 
um, MicroPython, Mr. Lady Ada, could you? Could well, you... just on a related note to this, um, I was emailing with Damien, and we helped get the word out about their um, sponsors on GitHub, and they were able to hit some of their goals. But Adafruit is a financial sponsor of MicroPython, and we'll continue to do it. And we also will help get the word out. If you use it, there is a way to sponsor on GitHub. Um, and then there's large entities like Lego. Um, we also yes. reached out to some other companies that have used MicroPython. We said, hey, like this is how we can show that open source can work. And yes. um, you know, we have a flavor of MicroPython, CircuitPython, and there's lots of other variants. So we had said, hey, let's continue to build off of each other, do the whole skateboard thing where we're just all doing tricks to push the state of the art. And so far, so good. I think it's probably one of the best success stories of a community. And that also led to uh, more chip support, more people being able to use it, and just overall, um, more a projects. good time. Yeah, yes. more projects. Don't forget, you can sponsor, and, and part of that sponsorship might be requesting um, features or board support. If you give them money, they're way more likely to be able to do it um, because it does cost money. Um, engineers are, are well compensated as they should be. Um, that takes cash, and while um, hugs and tweets and likes are always appreciated, um, they also really could always use a couple bucks. So throw them a couple dollars if you love using the free and open source and very liberally licensed um, MicroPython core. We do, because we love it. And, um, you know, on this topic, part of the 300 redesigns, and of course featured here in this newsletter, is the RP2040, and I thought, yes, that's me. A lot of, a lot of these boards that are flying out of me. This is Adafruit. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually up to like 312 now, I think as of yesterday. I kind of, I was like, I hit 300 last week and then I was like, I kind of did a little, another little bit of a push. Um, but you're seeing a lot of them in the new product section on Adafruit. Some of them are hidden, uh, you know, revisions. You don't, you may not notice that they've been revised, but uh, silkscreen, if the silkscreen gets updated, that's a good indicator. All right, so um, speaking of RP2040, let's go to the great search. Where in the world is that part I need? The Great Search with DJ Key. The Great Search brought to you by DJ Key and Adafruit. Every single week, Lady Ada uses Power of Engineering to help you, yes, you, find the part that you need. Or in this particular case, in this particular week, one of the um, keystone, could I say keystone? Keystone. I don't know. Um, uh, Fundamental? Yeah, it is a fundamental force of nature now because we've been able to do so much with a chip. And uh, we were thinking, oh, did we do a great search with RB24? Turns out we didn't. So now, it, no time like the present. Okay. Uh, so let's go to the overhead real fast. I'll just show off um, like a board I've been working on. So doing a lot of board designs and a lot of them are featuring the RP2040. Um, you know, we talked about this chip a lot, but you know, maybe you, you got to this video from Google and you're like, what is this chip and where can I get it? Um, so this is a microcontroller. Uh, that does need a couple of accessories with it, like um, it needs a QSPY flash, and you'll want a USB port to go with it, and a crystal, and a lot of capacitors, uh, and then a boot button and a reset button. Um, but other than that, it's uh, you know very well integrated chip that has um, a microcontroller core. It's got a dual Cortex M0 running at about 133 megahertz, but like you can really overclock it to like 250 um, if you feel like it, and we do that all the time. Uh, it's got four analog inputs, which is great. It has two PIO um, machines, which allow you to control uh, more complicated um, devices that aren't just I squared C or SPI. It's got I squared C, SPI, and UART built in, two of each. But like you want to drive NeoPixels, or maybe you want to like BitBank DVI or USB host, or you want to do I2S. All these things um, you would control with the PIO machines inside the RP24. That's like kind of their innovation. It's very cool. Um, NXP also has this thing called Flex.io. Um, but basically, you know, a lot of times engineers have to bit bang with a microcontroller and it has like auto bit banging devices. Um, super neat. Uh, there's also PWM outputs and lots of timers. Um, so it's a, it's a really cute microcontroller and it's very inexpensive um do note that of course you have to add an external flash chip which will add 50 cents and a crystal and that's going to be another 20 cents or so usb maybe another 10 20 cents so a total bill of materials costs about a buck um but you get 256k of ram in that sorry 264k of ram with that which is a lot and a lot of microcontrollers 
in this price range do not come with more than eight or 16. So it's, even though it's not a very powerful core, it's only a Cortex M0, not an M33 or M4. Um, you get a lot of RAM and a lot of flash in exchange and um, so you know these powerful peripherals that may make up for the fact that it's not like a super ultra hyper powered you know um, cortex m7 or something okay uh and then let's go to my computer another thing you know the reason we were on this topic was that MicroPython um is one of the recommended programming languages um the rp2040 was designed to be very easy to integrate um, and then also easy to run. You can run Arduino on it. You can run uh, Pico SDK, which is CMake, C, C++. Uh, there's also, I think, Rust um, ported to it. That's probably Golang, Lisp, a lot of other languages. It's, you know, because it's ARM Cortex, a lot of stuff um, is going to compile very cleanly to this core, as long as you just have the peripherals you need to get your work done. So um, good news if you're like, wow, I want this chip. Is this affected by the silicon shortage? Actually, it kind of never was. Um, it was available all through the last two years, which made it uh, one of our favorites for redesigns. Um, yeah, this is one of the, I'll say it's a little bit one of the more boring great searches because you just search for RP2040 and there's like a whole bunch of stuff. The key thing you may want is the RP2040 chip itself, which is available uh, under uh, SC0914, but you just Google for RP2040 and, and the chip is right here. Um, the price was originally a dollar a piece, but thanks to good price competition, it's now available at 70 cents a piece. Uh, what a good deal. Um, 70 cents is pretty amazing. Usually that's what you would get for an 8-bit microcontroller, like an 8051 core, but here you're getting a dual Cortex M0 with a ton of RAM. However, uh, you know, if you're going to use this, I will say um, you might want to check out, first off, they have great documentation, um, but we also have, if you want like a ready to go, I don't even want to look at schematics. We've got a whole bunch of RP2040 feather boards that you can use as your basis. They're all openly licensed. Uh, we've got like the feather RP2040, which we published um, basically when the feather with the RP2040 came out. Um, it looks like this. You can do it kind of has a little bit of everything. It has like a NeoPixel and battery backup and Stemma QT and boot switch and you know flash memory. So if you want to just kind of use this as your basis um, to make sure there's a lot of little power supply things you just want to make sure you get right. Uh, you can use um, you can use uh, this um, EagleCAD file and of course you can import that into KiCAD. We have many, many more boards as well. So like this RFM board and this DVI output board, if you want DVI output. Um, the other option is though, and, and you know, one thing that um, Raspberry Pi kind of, they, they like to make interest, interesting decisions is that the um, they also have the Pico boards. And let's see, this is probably under eval boards. So um, there's a few, like, you know, WizNet makes a couple. There's a few like compatibles, but the original, is like the um, RP2040 Pico. And what's interesting about this is it comes with these castellated pads, which make it very easy for it to be pick and placed or hand placed onto a PCB and then soldered directly onto the circuit board. And there are people who do this because once in a while you're like, I don't want to have all the components and I want to like do the arrangement. I just want to like place this on a board and I'm ready to go. I can move on to the rest of the design. So this is actually available in cut tape and tape and reel. So you can get a reel of 480. And actually when we get them um, to sell in the Adafruit shop, uh, they come like on a big reel and we have to cut them out. So you could send this to a board manufacturer and have them pick and place it onto your design. There's a couple of pads that are on the bottom. You'll, you know, there's on the bottom, there's pads. Let's see if it's documented here. Let's see, this is the pinout. So yeah, so this is the um, mechanical layout. And on the bottom, there are these test pads. And these test pads are the boot pin because that's not exposed. And I think, yeah, um, the USB minus and plus. And so if you want to have an external separate USB connector elsewhere, you route them out. Um, the LED, in case you want to have the LED indicator be also available somehow and the boot select pin, and that's how you enter into to bootloader mode. So those are not brought out on the castellated pads. 
they're brought out only on the um, test points. There's these test points here. This is the USB test points, and these are the LED and boot test points. There's also uh, three castellated pads here for SWD for debugging and in circuit programming. But you may be like, ah, you know, I don't want to solder it directly on. Well, there's also the Pico H. And the Pico H, it's a little bit of a hack because it's like, why is this a, it's such a long, thin board? So this board, um, on the bottom, it has this, like, structure with all the pins brought out. So you don't get the test pads, right? So you're not going to get the boot select and D plus, D minus. But this is something where you don't have to solder it directly on and you can plug it in. And if you're like, well, what's an easy way to have this plug in? This is the same as a 40 pin uh, 0.6 inch socket. Sorry, it's what you call an IC socket. Um, so the two by 20, I'm sure there's more than these, but these are some like really quick ones. You can get an IC socket and uh, have this plug in so instead of you know because you're like well i don't want if i don't want to permanently solder it in why would i get it with pins you can get a socket and then have it plug in directly that way so it's removable in case like you want to update to um like a pico w which they have with wireless or if the pico gets damaged so a couple options for you for for manufacturing um but still my pick of the of the week is the RP2040 chip, just the chip itself. What a good deal, 70 cents, and they've got 85,000 available at DigiKey. How can you say no? Where in the world is that part I need? The Great Search with DigiKey. That's the show for this week. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out and more. We'll see everybody during the week this week. Full schedule of shows yes. new products sneak peeks we're going to keep shipping open source hardware we're going to keep publishing code we're going to keep doing all the things to hopefully make our little corner of the universe a little bit more open a little bit more shiny a little bit more blinky a little bit more fun so we'll see everybody later all right thanks everybody bye bye good night